Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Italian ebook before it's gone. Welcome to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 Minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. Ciao, sono Consuelo, piacere. Hi, I'm Consuelo, nice to meet you. I've just introduced myself in Italian. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Italian. There are only two sentences to do it, but first, it is important to clarify that in Italian, there's a difference between formal and informal speech. Let's now see how Italians introduce themselves in an informal situation, referring to tu, Italian for you. Ciao, sono Consuelo, piacere di conoscerti. Hi, I'm Consuelo, nice to meet you. Ciao, sono Consuelo. Piacere di conoscerti. So, you just need to say, Ciao. Sono, add your name, and then, Piacere di conoscerti. Ciao, sono Consuelo. Piacere di conoscerti. And now, let's see the same sentence during a formal situation, referring to lei, the Italian courtesy form, for you. Buongiorno, sono Consuelo Innocenti. Piacere di conoscerla. Buongiorno, sono Consuelo Innocenti. Piacere di conoscerla. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a look at this. Ciao has been substituted with the formal greeting buongiorno. Italian for good morning. Sono Consuelo has not been changed. Sono stands in both cases for I am. However, during a formal self-introduction, we also say our last name. Consuelo Innocenti are respectively my first and last names. Finally, the sentence piacere di conoscerla has switched conoscerti into conoscerla, since conoscerla is referred to lei, the Italian formal courtesy form for you. So, the formal way to introduce yourself is Buongiorno, sono, here add your full name, and then Piacere di conoscerla. Buongiorno, sono Consuelo Innocenti, piacere di conoscerla. If you use the correct sentence with Italians, they are definitely going to be impressed. So, ciao, sono Consuelo, piacere. Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to italianpod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Italian. As good manners are always a must, this time we are going to learn how to thank people. So, siete pronti? Are you ready? Cominciamo! Let's start! There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Grazie. Grazie. Grazie means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add tante or mille, like grazie tante or grazie mille. Grazie tante or grazie mille. Tante means a lot and Mille means a thousand. Thank you a thousand times. During the last lesson, 
we mentioned both the formal and informal way of speaking Italian. If you want to be more formal when thanking someone, you should say la ringrazio. La ringrazio. That was the formal way to say thank you when referring to lei, the Italian courtesy form for you. Ringraziare is the infinitive form of the verb to give thanks, to be grateful. How to answer? It's easy. There are basically two different ways to do it. The first is prego. Prego means you're welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression non c'è di che. Non c'è di che means there's nothing about it. So, when someone is saying grazie to you, we can simply reply with prego or non c'è di che. Sometimes we can say them both, like prego, non c'è di che. For example, if someone is giving you something, grazie mille. Prego. Now, it's time for Consuelo's tips. Remember, when in doubt, when it is more appropriate to use grazie or la ringrazio, keep it simple is always your safest bet. If you're not sure whether to use the formal or casual version, you can always simply say grazie. So, grazie mille a tutti. Thank you very much, everybody. Do you know what arrivederci means? In the next lesson, you learn this and more greetings in Italian. Ciao, grazie, alla prossima lezione! Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo! Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful saying grazie. Today, we learn some of the most common greetings used in Italy. Pronti? Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! Let's start! The most used informal greeting is ciao. Ciao. Ciao means hi, hello, and goodbye. That's why we use it when we meet, but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with relatives or friends. And now, let's talk about some more formal greetings. The one you're used to hear in Italy and at ItalianPod11.com is Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Literally, buongiorno means good day. However, we could also interpret it as good morning or good afternoon. As a rule of thumb, we can use buongiorno only during the daytime from morning until evening. During the evening, we say buonasera. Buonasera. So, since sera obviously means evening, buonasera stands for good evening. Buongiorno and buonasera are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. In this formal situation, Italians use arrivederci. Arrivederci. Arrivederci means goodbye. Finally, in Italian, we use the expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. That is, a presto. A presto. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in Italian. Ciao! Ciao! Buongiorno! Buonasera! Arrivederci! Arrivederci! A presto! A presto! It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. In formal situations, Italians commonly greet one another by shaking hands. On the other hand, 
if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on the cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Italian friends. It's normal. Ciao! Ciao! In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Parla inglese? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in 3 minuti lesson. Ciao, a presto, alla prossima lezione! Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo! Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Italian. We talked about greetings like ciao, buongiorno, buonasera and so on. Today, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? Using this phrase as opposed to speaking English to someone is important for many reasons. For one, if the person you're speaking to doesn't understand English, at least they'll be able to understand what you're saying. Furthermore, that you've made an effort to learn even a little bit of the language shows a lot of respect on your part. So, for these reasons and many more, we are going to cover this very important phrase. Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! So, let's start! Now, here's the informal way to say it. Parli inglese? Parli inglese? In this sentence, the verb parlare, to speak, is inflected in the second singular person, tu. You can easily recognize it from the ending part of the verb parli. To learn how to properly conjugate are verbs like parlare at the present indicative, please look at our Absolute Beginner series. You can find very detailed grammar lessons if you check up on italianpod101.com. But now let's go back to parli inglese. Inglese is the adjective that means English. When asking the question, do you speak English in a formal situation, you should switch the verb parlare into the third singular person, lei. The result is, parla inglese? This sentence could be very helpful if you are in trouble on the streets, in a restaurant, at a hotel. No matter where you are, whenever you need to talk to an English speaker, just ask, parla inglese? Adding scusi, excuse me, the sentence becomes more polite. Scusi, parla inglese? Scusi, parla inglese? The responses you will receive could be basically one of these three. Sì. Sì. Un po'. Un po'. No. Non parlo inglese. No, non parlo inglese. Since this last one is a negative statement, we should say non before the verb. With io, Italian for I, the verb changes into parlo. That is why I do not speak is non parlo. Non parlo. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Italians study other European languages at school, so maybe you get lucky. Just substitute inglese with francese for French, spagnolo for Spanish, and tedesco for German. In today's lesson, we mentioned scusi. In the next lesson, we learn this and other ways to apologize in Italian. It's never too late to show your good manners with Italian people. I'll see you in our next Italiano in 3 minuti lesson. Ciao, alla prossima lezione!
Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo. Welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Scusi, parla inglese? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Scusi, which means excuse me in formal Italian. Today, we are going to learn how to use scusi and other words when apologizing in Italian. Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! Let's start! We should use scusi in formal Italian, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, scusi, un caffè per favore. Scusi, un caffè, per favore. We can also use it when asking a question. Scusi, dov'è il Colosseo? Scusi, dov'è il Colosseo? Sometimes we also hear people say, mi scusi, which actually has the same meaning. We always use this phrase in formal speech. The informal way to say excuse me is scusa. Scusa. We can use scusa when asking a friend or a relative a question. For example, scusa, che ore sono? Scusa, che ore sono? Or when apologizing. Scusa, sono in ritardo. Scusa, sono in ritardo. Instead of scusa, we can also say scusami, which has the same meaning. Besides scusi and scusa, if we want to apologize for something, we may use mi dispiace. Italian for I am sorry, in both formal and informal situations. Someone might tell us mi dispiace in a formal situation. For example, the waiter of a restaurant could say mi dispiace ma i calamari sono finiti. Mi dispiace ma i calamari sono finiti. Or, in an informal situation, when you need to apologize to a friend, you could say, Mi dispiace per ieri. Mi dispiace per ieri. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. Please remember that in Italy, if you accidentally bump into someone, we don't say, I am sorry, mi dispiace. Instead, we say, Scusi. Excuse me. My last tip for today is this. When you want to apologize in a deeper, more heartfelt way, you can add the adverb molto or tanto next to mi dispiace, saying mi dispiace molto or mi dispiace tanto. Hey guys, please tell me, are you able to count in Italian? What is the name of our lessons? Italiano in tre minuti. You see, you already know a number. Tre. Three. In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Italian from one to ten. Tre, due, uno, via! Three, two, one, go! We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in tre minuti lesson. Ciao! Alla prossima lezione! Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo. Welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Italian, including scusi and mi dispiace. Today, we are going to learn numbers. Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! 
So, let's start. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. Ok, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. Great job! What is before uno? Do you know? It's the same as in English, but with a different pronunciation. Zero. Zero. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your mobile number in Italian. Let's try together. Il mio numero è 337-122. 4968 Can you read it by yourself? 337 122 4968 Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. When we buy groceries in Italy in shops or supermarket, we usually have to stand in line with a number. When it's your turn to check out, they scream, numero uno, numero dieci, and so on. You must be ready. In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 10 to 100. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson. From uno to dieci. Tre, due, uno, via! Three, two, one, go! We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in tre minuti lesson. Ciao! Alla prossima lezione! Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo. Welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Do you remember them? Here I'll tell you again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now let's continue from 11. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and finally we have 20. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. The numbers from 11 to 20 may seem harder to remember, but please keep in mind that from 11 to 16, the numbers always end in 10, which stands for 10, but from 17, 17, they switch into 10, and the order is reversed, like 18 and 19. Counting from 10 to 100, it's super easy. Now I'll give you the tens. 30, 
quaranta, cinquanta, sessanta, settanta, ottanta, novanta, cento. We form Italian compound numbers above 20 by simply adding each element in successive order. So, take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. Let's try it out by forming some of these numbers. Take the number 56. 50 is 50. And then add 6. Say, 56. It's done. Isn't that easy? Let's make another number. For instance, 99. Take 90, 90, and then add 9, 9, 99. Now, be sure to pay attention. Since the numbers 20, 30, 40, and so on, drop the final vowel before 1 and 8, because they both begin with a vowel. For example, 21, 20, uno, ventuno, or trentotto, trenta, otto, trentotto. After only two lessons, you are now able to count 100 in Italian. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. If you want to practice your numbers, why don't you play tombola with your Italian friends? What is tombola? Tombola is the Italian version of bingo. In the Napolitan version, each number has a very amusing drawing that represents a character. For example, the number 22, 22, is O Paz, the fool. In the next lesson, we are going to learn the phrase Quanto costa? Do you know what that phrase means? We'll see this and many other words that may help you while shopping. We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in 3 Minuti lesson. Ciao, alla prossima lezione! Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo! Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 Minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Italian. I hope you spent enough time practicing the numbers. They will be useful for this lesson because we are going to learn how to ask how much is it? The phrase how much is it is quanto costa? Quanto costa? Are you ready for some unchecked shopping in Italy? Let's practice together. The first thing to say to a shop clerk is Scusi. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. So, Scusi, quanto costa? Scusi, quanto costa? If we want to be more specific when asking how much is this, we should add questo when referring to a masculine object or questa when referring to a feminine object. Quanto costa questo? Quanto costa questa? For example, hat is a masculine noun. Cappello. Scusi, quanto costa questo cappello? And what about feminine nouns? Skirt in Italian is feminine. Gonna. So, scusi, quanto costa questa gonna? At this point, the shop clerk can answer by saying, costa bla bla bla, sono bla bla bla, fanno bla bla bla. For example, sono 39 euro, fanno 39 euro, or costa 39 euro. What number is 39? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay, it's 39. It costs 39 euros. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. A quicker way to ask how much is quant'è, which literally means how much is. Even when you ask for an espresso at the counter of an Italian bar, 
you can ask the cashier, un espresso, per favore. Quant'è? One espresso, please. How much is it? So, don't forget that Italian streets are full of stands. And in most little towns, you can easily find local markets with many stands where you can buy absolutely everything. At this point, can you count euros in Italian? We are going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in 3 Minuti lesson. Ciao, alla prossima lezione! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what are masculine and feminine nouns and how are they different? In Italian, all nouns have a gender. A noun can either be masculine or feminine. That applies to plural nouns too and to all the words that can modify nouns, such as articles and adjectives. Other Romance languages have similar system of masculine and feminine nouns. It's a trait that comes from Latin. The gender depends on the origin of the Latin word. English doesn't have masculine and feminine nouns though. So the easiest way for English speakers to tell a noun's gender is by looking at the last letter of the noun. If a noun ends with O in the singular and E in the plural, it's usually masculine. If a noun ends with A in the singular and E in the plural, it's usually feminine. For example, sedia, meaning chair, ends with an A, so it's feminine. La sedia, in the plural, le sedie. Libro, meaning book, ends with an O, so it's masculine. Il libro and in the plural, i libri, ending with an i. The oi for masculine and ae for feminine rule doesn't always work though. Most of the time, but not always. There are some exceptions like la moto, meaning the bike, which is feminine, and il problema, meaning the problem, which is actually masculine. To make things even more complicated, there is a third class of nouns ending with E in the singular and I in the plural. These can be masculine or feminine depending on the word. That's why it's important to learn nouns and their respective genders together with the right definite articles. The definite articles are different from each gender, so they'll help you remember. For example, take bicchiere, meaning glass which is in that third category of nouns ending in E. The right article for bicchiere is il, so il bicchiere is masculine. How about nave, meaning ship? The right article for this one is la, so la nave is feminine. Again, there is unfortunately no formula to find the right gender. The Latin origins of words go way back and often people don't know why some words have a certain gender today. Your best guide is going to be our first rule, singular O and plural I for masculine and singular A, plural E for feminine. Just try to memorize the articles with the nouns and before you know it, the gender classifications will come naturally to you. Woo! That's it for this lesson. Please send in any more questions you have and I'll try to answer them. A presto, see you soon! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I will answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is essere o avere? How can I choose the right auxiliary verb in compound verbs? In Italian, when forming compound tenses, 
such as the present perfect or passato prossimo, you'll need an auxiliary verb. This will either be essere, to be, or avere, to have. In English, you don't have to make this choice, as you only need to have. That's why deciding which auxiliary to use in Italian can be a bit difficult at first. Let's have a look at some rules that will help you choose the right auxiliary. The first thing you need to remember is that transitive verbs always need avere. Let's see some examples. Io ho mangiato una mela. I have eaten an apple. Mangiare, to eat, is a transitive verb, meaning that it can have a direct object. Giorgio ha guardato un film. Giorgio has watched a movie. Guardare, to watch, is also transitive. Abbiamo conosciuto Laura. We have met Laura. Conoscere, to meet, is also transitive. Reflexive verbs, on the other hand, always use essere. Let's see an example. Mi sono innamorato. I have fallen in love. Innamorarsi, to fall in love, is reflexive. Verbs in the passive form also use essere. La mela è stata mangiata. The apple has been eaten. È stata mangiata, meaning has been eaten, is a passive form of mangiare, to eat. What about intransitive verbs? Some use essere and others avere. Although there are no set rules, here are some things you can look out for. For example, intransitive verbs of movement always use essere, such as andare, to go, and arrivare, to arrive. Here are two sample sentences. Ieri sono andata a Venezia. Yesterday I went to Venice. Siete arrivati tardi. You have arrived late. On the other hand, intransitive verbs of movement, where the destination doesn't need to be mentioned, always use avere. Some examples are camminare, to walk, or viaggiare, to travel. A few sample sentences. Abbiamo camminato tanto. We have walked a lot. Ho viaggiato in treno. I've traveled by train. One last thing. There are some cases where both essere and avere are acceptable. This mainly happens with verbs about the weather. Piovere, to rain. Nevicare, to snow. Grandinare, to hail. Tuonare, to thunder. So you can say è piovuto, but also ha piovuto. Both means it has rained. Pretty interesting, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. A presto, see you soon! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what is gerundio? Gerundio, or in English gerund, is a verb non-finite mood. This means that you don't need to conjugate it. It's very similar to the continuous form of English verbs ending in ing. As we said, it's very convenient as you don't need to conjugate it. It only has two endings. Ando for verbs ending in are and endo for verbs ending in ere and ire. Another reason why it's easy is that it only has two tenses, present and past. Here are some verbs in the present gerund. Parlando, talking, from parlare to talk. Cadendo, falling, from cadere to fall. Dormendo, sleeping, from dormire to sleep. To form the past gerund, use the right auxiliary essere, to be, or avere, to have, in the present gerund, plus the past participle of the main verb. Here is the past gerund of the same verbs. Avendo parlato, having talked. Essendo caduto, having fallen. Avendo dormito, having slept. You can use the gerund alone for two actions happening at the same time. Studio, ascoltando la musica. I study listening to music. To say why something happens. Essendo stanca, andrò a letto. Being tired, 
she went to bed. To express a possibility, a hypothesis. Volendo, potremmo andare al cinema. If he wanted to, we could go to the movies. Another way you can use the gerund is combined with the verb stare, to stay, to be. If you combine the present tense of stare and the gerund, you get the present continuous. For example, sto studiando italiano. I am studying Italian. Tu stai leggendo. You are reading. If you combine the imperfect tense of stare and the gerund, you get the past continuous. Stavo studiando italiano. I was studying Italian. Tu stavi leggendo. You were reading. Pretty easy, right? If you have any more questions, please leave us a comment. A presto, see you soon! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what are modified nouns? In Italian, you can modify nouns. That allows you to convey feelings such as love, hate or irony in a concise and effective way. Modified nouns, called nomi alterati, can take different endings that convey different feelings. They are usually divided into categories. Let's see which ones. To describe something positively or negatively, you can use pezzeggiativi and dispregiativi. Pezzeggiativi express endearment. Some common suffixes are uccio and ino. For example, tesoruccio, sweetheart, gattino, kitten. Dispregiativi express dislike. Common suffix are accio and astro, for example, scarpaccia, ugly shoe, giovinastro, loud. To describe the aspect of something, you can use accrescitivi and diminutivi. Accrescitivi indicate a big size. The most common suffix is one, for example, ragazzone, big boy, nasone, big nose. Diminutivi indicate smallness. Common suffixes are ino, etto, otto, ello. For example, topino, little mouse, bacetto, small kiss, leprotto, small hair, alberello, little tree. Be aware of fake modified nouns or falsi alterati. These are words that look like modified nouns but mean a total different thing. Matto means crazy person, but mattone is not a big crazy man, it's a brick. And mulino means mill, not a small mule, that's mulo. Italian children often learn funny nursery rhymes in school about these false modified nouns. Here is one I just invented, ready? Take note. La gomma per cancellare, il gommone per andare al mare. Col burro puoi cucinare, ma del burrone non scivolare. Se vedi un lampo, c'è il temporale. Se vedi un lampone, lo puoi mangiare. Which means the eraser to erase, the raft to go out to the sea. With butter you can cook, but don't sleep on the ravine. If you see lightning, that's a storm. If you see a raspberry, you can eat it. Pretty fun, right? Do you know any other false modifying noun? Let us know in the comments. A presto! See you soon! Welcome to Can Do Italian by ItalianPod101.com Ciao a tutti! Sono Felice Angelini! Hi everyone, I am Felice Angelini. In this lesson, you learn how to introduce yourself in Italian. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Italy. Paolo Parisi, a passenger sitting next to him, introduces himself by saying, Hello, I'm Paolo Parisi. Nice to meet you. Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. 
listen to the conversation, and focus on Mark's response. Ready? Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Piacere. Sono Mark Lee. Once more, with the English translation. Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Hello, I'm Paolo Parisi. Nice to meet you. Piacere. Sono Mark Lee. Nice to meet you. I'm Mark Lee. Let's take a closer look at Mark's response. Do you remember how Mark Lee introduces himself? Nice to meet you. I'm Mark Lee. Piacere. Sono Mark Lee. First is the expression Piacere. Meaning a pleasure. Piacere. Piacere. Piacere is actually a shortened version of Piacere di conoscerla. Meaning, it's a pleasure to meet you. Piacere di conoscerla. Both Mark and Paolo use the short form Piacere in their introductions. This shortened version can be used in many contexts and is appropriate for both formal and informal situations. Do you remember how Mark says, I'm Mark Lee. Sono Mark Lee. First is, Sono. I am. Sono. Sono. Note. Sono. Is a shortened form of, Io sono. In Italian, Io. I is usually omitted, as it can be understood from context. Sono. Is from the verb, Essere. Meaning, to be. Essere. Next is the name, Mark Lee. Mark Lee. Mark Lee. Mark Lee. Together, it's... Sono Mark Lee. I'm Mark Lee. Sono Mark Lee. The pattern is... Sono. Name. I'm. Name. Sono. Name. To use this pattern, simply replace the name placeholder with your name. Imagine you're Karen Lee. In Italian, Karen Lee. Karen Lee. Karen Lee. Say, I'm Karen Lee. Ready? Sono Karen Lee. I'm Karen Lee. Sono Karen Lee. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. Piacere, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere, sono Mark Lee. Piacere, sono Mark Lee. Piacere, sono Karen Lee. Piacere, sono Karen Lee. Piacere, sono Felice Angelini. Piacere, sono Felice Angelini. Piacere, mi chiamo Rosa Romano. Piacere. Mi chiamo Rosa Romano. Did you notice how the last speaker uses a different pattern? She says, Mi chiamo Rosa Romano. My name is Rosa Romano. Mi chiamo Rosa Romano. This pattern uses the phrase, Mi chiamo. Which literally means, I myself call, but translates as, 
My name is. Mi chiamo. Mi chiamo. First is. Mi. Meaning me. Mi. Mi. After this is. Chiamo. Meaning I call. Chiamo. Chiamo. Note. Chiamo. Is the shortened form of. Io chiamo. In Italian. Io. I is usually omitted. Chiamo. Is from the verb. Chiamare. To call. Chiamare. Next is the name. Rosa Romano. Rosa Romano. Rosa Romano. Rosa Romano. All together. Mi chiamo Rosa Romano. Literally, myself I call Rosa Romano, but it translates as my name is Rosa Romano. Mi chiamo Rosa Romano. The pattern is Mi chiamo name. My name is name. Mi chiamo name. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern Sono name. I'm name. Sono name. Let's review the key vocabulary. Buongiorno. Hello. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, nice to meet you? Piacere. Piacere. And the Italian pronunciation of Mark Lee's name? Mark Lee. Mark Lee. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, I'm Mark Lee? Sono Mark Lee. Sono Mark Lee. And do you remember how Mark Lee says, Nice to meet you, I'm Mark Lee. Piacere, sono Mark Lee. Piacere, sono Mark Lee. Do you remember how Paolo Parisi says, Hello? Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Do you remember how Paolo Parisi says, Hello, I'm Paolo Parisi. Nice to meet you. Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee. Karen Lee. Respond to Paolo Parisi's self-introduction. Ready? Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Piacere, sono Karen Lee. Listen again and repeat. Piacere, sono Karen Lee. Piacere, sono Karen Lee. Let's try another. Imagine you're Rosa Romano. Rosa Romano. Ready? Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Piacere. 
piacere. Sono Rosa Romano. Listen again and repeat. Piacere. Sono Rosa Romano. Piacere. Sono Rosa Romano. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Felice Angelini. Felice Angelini. Ready? Buongiorno, sono Paolo Parisi. Piacere. Piacere, sono Felice Angelini. Listen again and repeat. Piacere, sono Felice Angelini. Piacere, sono Felice Angelini. In casual situations, you can also use this pattern with just your first name. For example, in the case of Karen Lee, you can simply say Sono Karen. I'm Karen. Sono Karen. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to introduce yourself in Italian. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Well done! Now you know how to introduce yourself in Italian. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do Italian by ItalianPod101.com. Ciao a tutti, sono Felice Angelini. Hi everyone, I'm Felice Angelini. In this lesson, you learn how to tell someone where are you from in Italian. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Italy. Paolo Parisi, a passenger sitting next to him, asks, Where are you from? Di dove? Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Note the speakers in this conversation use formal Italian. Ready? Di dove? Sono di New York. Once more with the English translation. Di dove? Where are you from? Sono di New York. I am from New York. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Paolo Parisi asks, Where are you from? Di dove? First is... Di. Meaning from in this context. Di. Di. Next is... Dove? A formal phrase which translates as, where are you? Dove? First is... Dove? Where? Dove? Dove? Next is... E. You are when using formal Italian. 
Eh. Eh. Note. Eh. Is a shortened form of. Lei è. You are. In Italian. Lei. You, when using formal Italian, can be omitted when it is understood from context. E. Is from the verb. Essere. Meaning to be. Essere. Dove. Is contracted with. E. To form. Dove. Altogether. Di dove. Where are you from? Di dove. Remember this question. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, I am from New York? Sono di New York. First is... Sono. I am. Sono. Sono. Note in this sentence. Sono. Is a shortened form of. Io sono. I am. In Italian. Io. I is usually omitted as it's understood from context. Sono. Is from the verb. Essere. Meaning to be. Essere. Next is. Di. From, in this context. Di. Last is the city. New York. New York. New York. New York. Altogether. Sono di New York. I am from New York. Sono di New York. The pattern is Sono di city name. I am from city name. Sono di city name. Note this pattern works only with the names of cities, villages, or towns. To use this pattern, simply replace the city name placeholder with the name of your hometown city. Imagine you're from Sydney. In Italian, Sydney. 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 Say, I am from Sydney. Ready? Sono di Sydney. I am from Sydney. Sono di Sydney. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. Sono di New York. Sono di New York. Sono di Bologna. Sono di Bologna. Sono di Seattle. Sono di Seattle. Sono di Londra. Sono di Londra. Sono di Roma. Sono di Roma. Sono australiana. Sono australiana. Did you notice how the last speaker uses a different pattern? Sono australiana. I am Australian. Sono australiana. Instead of D. Plus the city name placeholder, she uses an adjective for her nationality. This pattern is Sono nationality. I am nationality. Sono nationality. In Mia Martin's case, she uses a feminine adjective Australiana. To describe herself. 
sono australiana. In the case of a male speaker from Australia, he would use a masculine adjective australiano to describe himself. Sono australiano. I'm Australian. Sono australiano. You can use this response to answer the question Di dov'è? You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern Sono di city name. I am from city name. Sono di city name. Let's review the key vocabulary. Bologna. 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 Seattle. 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 Londra. London. Londra. Londra. Roma. Rome. Roma. Roma. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say New York? New York. New York. And how to say from? D. D. Do you remember how Mark says I am from New York. Sono di New York. Sono di New York. Do you remember the formal way to say where are you? Dov'è? Dov'è? And do you remember how Paolo Parisi asks, where are you from? Di dov'è? Di dov'è? Do you remember how to say London? Londra. Londra. And how to say Seattle? Seattle. Seattle. Do you remember how to say Rome? Roma. Roma. Let's practice. Imagine you're Jack Jones from London. Respond to Paolo Parisi's question. Ready? Di dove? Sono di Londra. Listen again and repeat. Sono di Londra. Sono di Londra. Let's try another. Imagine you're Emma Esposito from Seattle. Ready? Di dove? Sono di Seattle. Listen again and repeat. Sono di Seattle. Sono di Seattle. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Felice Angelini from Rome. Ready? 
Di dov'è? Sono di Roma. Listen again and repeat. Sono di Roma. Sono di Roma. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to talk about where you're from in Italian. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Well done! Now you know how to talk about where you're from in Italian. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do Italian by ItalianPod101.com. Ciao a tutti, sono Felice Angelini. Hi everyone, I'm Felice Angelini. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your occupation in Italian. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Italy. He asks the passenger sitting next to him, Paolo Parisi, Are you a student? È studente? Listen to the conversation and focus on Paolo's response. Note, the speakers in this conversation use formal Italian. Ready? È studente? No, non sono studente. Sono investitore. Once more with the English translation. È studente? Are you a student? No. Non sono studente. Sono investitore. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mark asks, Are you a student? È studente? First is E. Eh. You are when using formal Italian. E. Eh. E. Eh. Note. E. Eh. Is a shortened form of Lei è. You are. In Italian. Lei. You, when using formal Italian, can be omitted when it is understood from context. E. Eh. Is from the verb Essere. Meaning to be. Essere. Next is Studente. Student. Studente. Studente. In Italian, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Studente. Is masculine singular. Altogether. È studente. Are you a student? È studente? Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Paolo says, No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. No, non sono studente. Sono investitore. First is the expression, No. Meaning, no. 
No. No. It answers Mark's yes or no question, are you a student? Estudiante. After this, Paolo specifies that he's not a student. Non sono studente. I'm not a student. Non sono studente. First is... Non. Not. Non. Non. Next is... Sono. I am. Sono. Sono. Note here... Sono. Is a shortened form of... Io sono. I am. In Italian... Io. I is usually omitted, as it's understood from context. Sono. Is from the verb... Essere. Meaning to be. Essere. Together, it's... Non sono. Literally, not I am, but it translates as I'm not. Non sono. Next is... Studente. Student. Studente. Altogether. Non sono studente. I'm not a student. Non sono studente. Paolo then tells Mark his actual occupation. Sono investitore. I'm an investor. Sono investitore. First. Sono. I am. Sono. Next is... Investitore. Investor. Investitore. Investitore. The word... Investitore. Is masculine singular. Together... Sono investitore. I'm an investor. Sono investitore. Altogether... No, non sono studente. Sono investitore. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. No, non sono studente. Sono investitore. The pattern is... No, non sono... Occupation. Sono... Actual occupation. No, I'm not occupation. I'm... Actual occupation. No, non sono. Occupation. Sono. Actual occupation. Imagine you're Emma Esposito, a student. The word for a female student is... Studentessa. 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 Paolo Parisi asks you if you're a teacher. Insegnante. 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 Say, No, I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. Ready? No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. No, I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. In Italian, some occupations have the same word for both genders. For example, Insegnante. 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 However, much of the time, words will differ depending on gender. In general, Nouns that end in O tend to be masculine, while nouns that end in A tend to be feminine. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. No, non sono studente. Sono investitore. No, non sono studente. Sono investitore. No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. No, non sono insegnante. 
sono ingegnere. No, non sono insegnante. Sono ingegnere. No, non sono infermiera. Sono medico. No, non sono infermiera. Sono medico. No, non sono studente. Sono insegnante. No, non sono studente. Sono insegnante. No, sono barista. No, sono barista. Did you notice how the last speaker omits part of the response? No, sono barista. No, I'm a barista. No, sono barista. When directly responding to someone's question, it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply answering No. No, there's no need to say Non sono studentessa. I'm not a student. This pattern is No, sono Actual occupation. No, I'm actual occupation. No, sono Actual occupation. You should be aware of this, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern No, non sono Occupation Sono Actual occupation No, I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. No, non sono Occupation Sono Actual occupation Let's review the key vocabulary. Student. Studente. Studente. Studentessa. Studentessa. Insegnante. Teacher. Insegnante. Insegnante. Ingegnere. Engineer. Ingegnere. Ingegnere. Nurse. Infermiere. Infermiere. Infermiera. Infermiera. Medico. Doctor. Medico. Medico. Barista. 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 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how Paolo says investor? Investitore. Investitore. And how Paolo says I'm an investor? Sono investitore. Sono investitore. Do you remember how Paolo says student? Studente. Studente. And how to say not? Non. Non. Do you remember how Paolo says I am not a student? Non sono studente. Non sono studente. Do you remember how Paolo Parisi says, I'm not a student, I'm an investor?
Non sono studente, sono investitore. Non sono studente, sono investitore. Do you remember how Mark Lee asks, are you a student? Remember, Mark uses formal Italian. È studente? È studente? Do you remember the word for a female student? Studentessa. Studentessa. And the word for teacher. Insegnante. Insegnante. Do you remember the word for engineer? Ingegnere. Ingegnere. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're an engineer. Respond to Paolo's question. Ready? È insegnante? No, non sono insegnante, sono ingegnere. Listen again and repeat. No, non sono insegnante, sono ingegnere. No, non sono insegnante, sono ingegnere. Let's try another. Imagine you're Felice Angelini and you're a teacher. Ready? È studente? No, non sono studente, sono insegnante. Listen again and repeat. No, non sono studente, sono insegnante. No, non sono studente, sono insegnante. Let's try one more. Now imagine you're Emma Esposito and you're a student. Ready? È insegnante. No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. Listen again and repeat. No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. No, non sono insegnante. Sono studentessa. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done. Now you know how to talk about your occupation in Italian. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Well done. Now you know how to talk about your occupation in Italian. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Expand.
expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Italian ebook before it's gone.